YouTube Nation, what it do, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. For everybody who's first time tuning in, please like, share, and subscribe. What up, y'all? Before I get into this video, let me go and send my condolences and my prayers, man, to the homie Fat Dog from Five Dudes Broadway and his homie Rat. Man, I didn't know Rat. Uh, it's crazy how I know Fat Dog because Fat Dog contacted me by way of seeing my videos, man. And uh, he's a uh, Fat Dog go back with Spark. Uh, Fat Dog, like many others, like my content. So we we develop a friendship. I never met Fat Dog in person, man. It was just always uh, phone conversations and texts. He, he had just hit me up, man, like last month. And he was like, uh, just wishing me a happy New Year's. We talked briefly and I needed a tire on my car. I had, I had a flat. And he was like telling me go to the spot on Century. I get a good deal on tires. And that was the last time I talked to him, man. I was on Instagram last week. And I was just, before I got sick and I was just scrolling by and I seen a picture, this picture right here in particular. And I was like, what? I'm like, oh no, nah, somebody had posted this. So this is the only picture I had of the homie, man. But I just want to send my condolences to Fat Dog and his family, the Five Dudes Broadway. Shout out Crazy Pope and all the other homies over there, man, that I know. I, I got a lot of love for a lot of Five Dudes Broadways. I, I've been fucking a lot of Five Dudes Broadways in the, pit, in the prison system. So I know quite a few of them over there. Shout out Zip as well and his brother D-Town. Hey man, uh, it's crazy though, man, but I mean, the way I be dropping content on here and it's like, cause I don't be, I don't be on here getting involved in all the messy stuff on YouTube, man. I don't be slinging mud and all that old shit for views. You know what I mean? I don't have one video on my channel of me uh, doing what everybody else is doing, talking about this cat and that cat and whatever. I don't, I don't do that, man. That, that works for them. I mean, that's cool for the, those that do that, but that ain't my thing. So I don't do it. And a lot of older casting got at me and told me that's cool. Just keep doing what you're doing and don't get involved in all that old messy ass shit. And the reason I don't, bro, because where I come up, you know what I mean? I come up in the prison system on a high level prisons at that. And I know, you know, certain things I just don't do, bro. You know what I mean? Rather on the streets, in prison, or on YouTube. So I don't get on YouTube and just get to talking shit and doing all that old type of stuff to somebody. I don't know just because everybody else doing it. I don't give a damn what the other dudes is talking about. I don't know these dudes, so I don't talk about people I don't know. So a lot of cats that reached out and shared they, uh, you know, their gratitude, their appreciation for the type of content I do. Because when it comes to me speaking on Crip stuff, I always got to give props to the Crips, regardless of where they from. I just can't stick to the Crips on my side of the Crip fence. Just stick to Strictly Raymond's. Because, I, like I say, also, hold up, before I go any further, let me take a minute, man. Let me give a shout-out to Tony Stacy, man. Uh, salute, big homie. And, of course, Daryl Ransom. Salute, big homie. All the other OG Hoovers I know, man. Uh, uh, Lil' Bam from A-Trey Hoover. Lil' Bam was my neighbor in Pelican Bay in 93. And B for, it was at B Facility back in 8 Block. Him and I think Toto from Great Facilities and me and the homies uh, Spider from Swamps was their neighbors when we was going through all these racial wars and shit. But I got a chance to meet OG Lil' Bam from A-Trey Hoover as well. But, Hey, man, I just respect all these dudes, man, because these dudes have put it down. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, you, like I said, you can never go and speak on nothing about Crips and without acknowledging these cats, man. So I was honored, man, when I seen Tony Stacy comment. was the first person to comment on my last video, man. And I was like, you know, salute, big homie. I, I really appreciate that. It's a trip because I believe Tony Stacy was in Pelican Bay at the same time I was up there in 93. I didn't get a chance to see him or meet him. But, uh, uh. I was I was hearing his name around there, but unless he got just got shipped out, you know what I mean. But he was up there somewhere around there during that time. I was just hearing the name T. S. and Hoover, and you know you know the names, you know these OG dudes' names. So you're like, okay, you know I, I got a chance to meet uh, OG Lil Sam from Hoover. We was in Calipat together. Uh, App, OG Applejack from Hoover. I done met so many of these dudes, man, over the years, bro. And you know, uh, man, you know it's it's respect, homie. It, it's it's respect, and I just appreciate when people jump on here, my nigga Gumby and them. All of them that jump on here and show me love, man, I appreciate that, man. So shout out to all my homies over there from Hoover, man. Salute to all y'all, man, that be tuning in, man. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate the love. You know, I'm going to keep doing it the way I do it, man. Keep it respectful and keep it 100, man, straight up, man. So on this story right here, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all a story about uh, the back in 93 in Pelican Bay. Uh, at this time, in 93... They opened up Lancaster around that time. Lancaster Level 4 Yard just opened up around that time. So all of us that was in Pelican Bay up there on the B Yard, 93, coming off this race war, 
this still still was going on actually so we've been on lockdown most of the years it's, it was cracking up there so when they opened up lancaster they started letting a lot of people that lived in southern california transfer down to lancaster i wasn't one of the ones that able to make it to lancaster because i was just getting out the shoe but a lot of homies was getting out the shoe they still went down there but uh, uh crazy d was up there cartoon was up there crazy d from a trade cartoon from fire trade a lot of homies was up there my homie snoop my homie coop all of them went down to uh Lancaster. So later on in the year, I said they opened up Lancaster, probably 92, but the, they start shipping cats off from the beef, beef facility, Pelican Bay, probably A and B, start shipping cats from Pelican Bay down to Lancaster in 93 to open that New York up. Ronnie Bath from 690 East Coast, all them cats went down there and it, it, it went down down there as well, but they deal with their situations down there. So we up here in Pelican Bay still. Now they opened up Sentinella level four. Now they gonna send a whole bunch of us down I live in Southern California to open up Sentinel Level 4, the CR. So I was on probably the second bus to go down there. So when I went down there, uh, during this time, who all went down to Sentinel with me around that time on these buses that was going was, shout out to the homie Johnny King, OG Puff, Mate Trey Gangster. It's a big homie as well, man. I learned a lot from him, man. And uh, Toots, OG Toots was up there with us too. A lot of these OG cats, homie, I knew in the Bay and different prisons I'd have been, but in the Bay because... I was up there with the big homie Lavelle player, Sparks older brother. And Lavelle knew a lot of these cats. I didn't. So we and on the beef facility in Pelican Bay is gates. Every two y'all, every two buildings is a gate. So we be talking to the gates. So I'm up there, young homie, me and my homie, little stacks. Uh and, and we we beating these cats, you know what I mean? Through the gate. We talking to cats. That's how I say I met two of them one time up there, because he was talking to the gate to the homie Lavelle player. So you know, I met a lot of these cats, and I'm, I'm glad I did, man. I'm glad I put myself in situations to go to these level four prisons instead of staying in the low level prisons. I didn't want that. I wanted to go where I went, and I'm glad I did because I was able to meet these individuals, uh, and I learned a lot from them. I learned structure, you know what I mean? And, and what I learned from them later on throughout my incarceration, when I was in places where I had the keys on the yard, I knew because I learned. I paid attention up there. So a lot of you cats out here that's younger coming up in the game on the streets and when you get to prison, man, pay attention, bro. Learn from those older than you. And don't just, don't just sit around and wait. Think you're going to learn just from your own homies from your own hood because you're going to learn from down moves too. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, that's life, bro. You don't never close yourself in to limit yourself to the knowledge you receive that it got to be strictly from your homie. So I learned from a whole bunch of crips, a whole bunch of bloods, and it helped me. It shaped me, and it, and it shows the type of content I'm putting out, the way I put out, the way I don't be on here all messy and all that old shit. It shows where I come from. It shows my upbringing that I was a student to all these cats. That's why I I, I got to give props to these dudes. So once again, shout out Tony Stacy, man, and all the rest of them, Bone Crusher from Five Deuce Broadway, all these cats that I had a chance to meet throughout my time in the shoe and on these level four prisons. So now, get back to the story. So we headed down to Sentinella in 93 from Pelican Bay. Now, for everybody that know they've been to Pelican Bay, that's like a 14-hour drive on the bus. I think in the car, they just going to take you down there all day because that's at the top of California. That's like four miles from the Oregon border. So what's in the Pelican Bay sits nestled in an old rainforest of, that used to be a, I think it's a lake bed, bro. It used to be a lake bed right there. And they built a prison, an old lake bed, right in a city called Crescent City, right off the one-on-one. -on -one. So I've been up there twice, but this is my first time up there. So anyway... I'm headed down to Sentinella. I'm on the bus this time. Me and the big homie. Shout out to homie Big Tweet, 76 East Coast. Salute, big homie. Shout out to my homie Big Coop, too. Much love, big homie. Uh, but uh, we coming down from Pelican Bay on our way to Sentinella. Now, you're going to always do a layoff. You're not going to never take a straight shot on the bus. At least I didn't. Every time I went up there, we laid over. So I think this time we laid over, I believe I laid over in Delano or something like that. Maybe we might have laid over Delano or... I don't know, but we laid over one on prisons this time because I've been up there a couple of times. It might have been Corcoran one time, one to laid over New Folsom. It, 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 it's, it's how I it go. But I think we laid over in Delano this time. And man, we was coming down, at, I guess it's the five now, leaving from Delano. And we start going through the grapevine. And for y'all don't know, the grapevine is this stretch on the five that's just, it's, it's like you got a raggedy car, you might not make it through. That shit is, that, right now with all this snow and this bad weather we got out here, I know it's probably snow on a grapevine right now or ice. So the bus, it's, it, it's a trip because it was around this time, it was around this time, 1990, 1994, I went down there. Yeah, I was up in Bay in 93, but we went down there in 94. Let me take that back. Yeah, we left early 94 because we went down there, it was right after the Northridge earthquake. Because on the way down, we went on the five, we passed Magic Mountain and all that shit you see where the freeways broke off over there, how the freeway fell after the earthquake. So anyway, before we got to that point, Coming out, going through this grapevine, 
this damn <laughs> this damn prison bus, man. We going through the grapevine on this damn prison bus and the damn bus break down. Now, you know, you would think you'd never hear about a prison bus break down with a whole bunch of convicts on it. This motherfucker broke down, bro. They had that. They got the highway patrol sheriffs and shit from the, I guess it's the city U-Haul and all that area around that way. They all came out. They posted security around the bus with the guns and shit. They had a, a motherfucking mechanic crew come out there. They jacked this big ass bus up. Kept us on this motherfucker. They jacked the bus up. The bus was tilted to the side like it was on a flat. It was something busted up under the bottom from understanding from what they said. It was something like the oil pan or some shit like that. They got the bus on jacks sideways. We're on this motherfucker like this. Convicts on this motherfucker. Shocking up these red jumpsuits and shit on our ankles. Me, if you have, anybody know Big Tweet from 76, Zach's actually Big Tweet about this story. He'll tell y'all the same shit. So we over here jacked up, man. They got the guns out there. Make, securing the bus. Make sure nobody come to, you know, hijack and get us off of there. And it was just a trip because... You never think you'll be on a prison bus and the damn prison bus breaks down. You would think that all these buses that they transport convicts up and down the state of California is A1, right? Hell no, nah, they got lemons over there too. They got lemon ass prison buses. This motherfucker broke down on us. The bus was like literally broke down. They had motherfucker come up under there with the, with the bus jacked up sideways like this. Motherfuckers up under there with, with motherfucking welders and shit, torches. We was over there for hours, bro. They was thinking about sending us back to Delano just to get us back on, just, just to put us there until they get the bus fixed. But they managed to get the bus fixed, bro. The bus finally got right. Put that motherfucker on. We was back on the road, and we headed to Sentinella. We made to Sentinella by like 11 o'clock at night. And at this time, like I said, Sentinella was a new prison. So we got there. The cells was empty. It was like we went to Building 4. That was, the, that was the orientation building. Building 4, a lot of empty cells. Oh, yeah, shout out my nigga uh, Hoover Rob from Non News Hoover, too. Yeah, Rob was my cellie in Sentinella, too, at one time, Rob. <laughs> Rob is crazy, the motherfucker. Shout out Hoover Rob. Wherever Hoover Rob at, man. That's the homie, man. Me and Rob got a lot of, uh, we had like, we had a lot to talk about. We were selling but uh, that's the homie. But I think we was in Pelican Bay together and, uh, and, uh, and sitting there. I believe Rob came down from Pelican Bay. I mean, yeah, Pelican Bay too on one of the other buses, maybe. But I know I was in two prisons with Hoover Rob and he was my cellie in Sentinella for a while. Yeah, man. But we made it down there late night by 11, 11, probably 11, 11, 12 o'clock at night. Went in there to a bunch of sales that was brand new. The sales still had con construction shit on it. At the time, it was this time of year, so it was cold. But you they let us know. It's when it get hot around here, make sure you got some at the bottom of your door because these scorpions and shit do be coming in these sales and shit like that. So we went down and opened up CR. Lunatic Frank from 6 -0. Shout out Lunatic. He came down there as well. Uh, Man, Lil Killer Rock from 6 -0. My homie Lil Kill. 8 Ounce Rest in Peace. My homie Pirate from Linwood Neighborhood. We always done Chim Chim from uh, Five Dudes Hoover's done that. This was our whole crew, man. This this is what I love about prison life. I, I, it's, it's funny to say that, that you love something about prison. I don't like shit about prison. Let me take that back. But this is what I did appreciate but like that from being in level four prisons is that you you become bond. You, you, you develop bonds with these dudes from hoods that you normally don't get along with on the streets. Right, that, excuse me, boy, y'all sick. But anyway... Chim Chim from Fado, we'd be in the cell wrestling. Loco, mommy, little kid. We had eight hours. We up in there. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was like that, man. It was, it, it was like that. We had some kind of relations up there. So, th once again, this is why I am the way I am, man, because I didn't fuck with dudes from all these different gangs, and it's been love. You did what I'm saying? So that's why I shout them out, man. I appreciate them all that be tuning in to my channel. That's why I don't, I don't, I don't never disrespect nobody hood. Not even when I'm talking to my homies. You, I haven't said a, 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 I haven't disrespected a hood in so motherfucking long, bro. I mean, I mean, saying this to my own people. I don't let talk and be like, fuck them niggas. I, I ain't done that in so long because of where I've been. And when you be in them kind of environments, bro, you're not used to that. Because you're used to going up against other type of forces, other races. You're dealing with racial shit. So you learn to really appreciate being black. You know what I'm saying? You appreciate your people because these niggas come to your rescue regardless of where you're from. And that's a whole nother lifestyle for a lot of us because we ain't used to that shit. We just used to warring with each other. And then in these low-level prisons, a lot of these cats, I didn't see in these low-level prisons, you get down here, these niggas be doing shit like, well, that ain't got nothing to do with us. You know what I mean? That's on them. You know what I mean? When it comes to other races, like, no, nigga, it always got something to do with you. You black, period. You niggas gonna get that out your system thinking like, okay, this is the streets. This is not the streets. You up in these prison systems, you're dealing with these other races. They don't like us. So you got to stick together with these other cats. You have to. That's, that's, that's your survival in there. So you learn how to deal with these dudes from the other side of the fence. You learn how to appreciate them. And you start learning from them because you develop bonds from them. Like I say, Ricochet 59 Hoover. That's one of my looks too. That's the homie right there. Shout out Ricochet, wherever Ricochet at. Uh, man, Ricochet should study together, man. Ricochet actually, Ricochet actually gave me a Swahili name that only he called me. You know what I mean? 
And that, that just come from us studying. Just used to sit on the steps and just study when I was a young cat. But like once again, I was a sponge. I was a sponge in those environments. I learned a lot from all these different Crips and Bloods. Shout out Broham from Westside Pyru as well. Wherever Broham at, Broham was another one that I fucked with up there real tough. But yeah, man, I just wanted to share a story with y'all, man. I wanted to give a shout out to all these cats. And once again, man, rest in peace, Fat Dog from Five Dudes Broadway Gangsta and his homie Rat. Man, small world, man. Show y'all appreciation and take advantage of the opportunities that you have today, man. Get the hate out your heart, man. It's more to life than just talking shit about other people. Talk about yourself. Yeah.